How many of you are stressed right now? Yeah. Come on, more, more, there's more of you. Okay, good, me too. Well today, I have a stress relief tool that's guaranteed to work, and I'd like to share it with you. It's called Keeping the Sabbath Day Holy. You ready? I know that as BYU students, because I am one, all of us have very stringent demands on our time, and sometimes it's very difficult to keep the Sabbath day holy, or even think about what we're going to do the next day. But today, I want to share with you that I know keeping the Sabbath day holy will bring blessings of peace and joy into our lives, similar to, similar to those Mr. Peterson talked about in keeping the honor code. I want to share with you three aspects of this commandment. First, the letter and the spirit of the law is given in the scriptures and by the Lord himself. Second, I want to talk about how to keep the Sabbath day as BYU students here right now. And third, I want to talk about the blessings that come from keeping the Sabbath day holy. And believe me, those blessings will make you want to do exactly what the Lord has commanded us to do. So first, let's start with where we begin in the Old Testament. Moses received the Ten Commandments from the Lord on Mount Sinai. And the fourth commandment was, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. This commandment was so stringent that later on in Exodus, the Lord actually said, if you break the Sabbath day by working, you're put to death. End of story. It's a big deal. Later on in the New Testament, we learned a lot from Jesus Christ and the disciples about the spirit of the law. Jesus went about doing good on all the days of the week, even the Sabbath. This picture is one of my favorite of Jesus Christ healing. This is at the pool of Bethesda where he healed the man who had been lame for many years. This story, as recorded in the scriptures, was actually performed on the Sabbath day. And we can learn from that. We can learn that the Lord's work is to be done on the Sabbath. And that there's many appropriate things we can do to keep the day holy unto him. Jesus Christ summarized the spirit of the law this way. He said, the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. As we move forward into modern times, we learn in the Doctrine and Covenants in section 59, that the Sabbath is a day for us to rest from our labors and to pay our devotions to the Most High God. Yeah, we go to church, but what else do we do? The Gospel Principles Manual that was published just this year and that we're now using in our, in our Elders Quorum and Relief Society classes, it says we should not perform any activity on the Sabbath that would distract us from giving our full attention to the matters of the Spirit. That's important. Anything that would distract us from the matters of the Spirit. To me, I consolidate these principles in the Scriptures into one major thing. That the, for the, that the Sabbath day, for it to be holy, we need to do something different. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So, the big question, what about us at BYU? The first thought that came to my mind was, should we study on Sunday? Let's see. We have some pretty compelling evidence that, sure, it's okay. In fact, our own Elder Maxwell had this to say in his book, Disciple Scholar. He said, for the disciple of Jesus Christ, scholarship is a form of worship. So if I'm, on, if I'm sitting around on Sunday afternoon, I've gone to church, what do I do next? Pull out my old chem book. That's worship. Right? What if our ox is in the Maya? That's a very common justification for studying on the Sabbath and for doing many other things. And I think that sometimes that's appropriate. But I believe that in order to do something different on the Sabbath, in the vast majority of cases, studying is not consistent with the commandment of is given. I looked around BYU, I thought, who would be the best person to ask about this? Who would have the most insight into keeping this commandment? I thought of Robert L. Millett. Robert L. Millett is the former dean of religious education here at BYU. He gets paid by the university to study the scriptures six days a week. What does he do on Sunday, though? I said, Brother Millett, how do you keep the Sabbath day holy? Do you do something different? He said, I suppose it is a personal decision but I have not felt comfortable studying my academic subjects on Sunday. Brother Millet doesn't study what the scriptures that he studies during the week on Sunday. It's a big difference. I think that's the important principle, that we study six days a week. We study hard. This day, this week in, in particular, we're probably studying 24 hours a day, six days a week. But for us to keep the Sabbath day holy, we can do something different. Now let's talk about the blessings that come. This is going to make it all worth it. First of all, Preach My Gospel says that as we keep the Sabbath day holy, our lives will be filled with joy and peace. You wanted a stress relief? Keep the Sabbath day holy. Joy and peace will come into your lives. It's a promise of the Lord. That's the first one. Second, 
Doctrine and Covenants section 59 says that as we keep the Sabbath day holy, we're keeping ourselves more fully unspotted from the world. You want to protect yourself from sin, from temptation? Keep the Sabbath day holy. Isaiah 58 says that as we turn away our feet from the Sabbath, from doing our pleasure on the Lord's holy day, we will delight ourselves in the Lord. I interpret that to mean that by keeping the Sabbath day holy, we will actually draw closer to the Lord. Do you want to feel closer to the Lord? Do you want to increase your capacity to serve his children? Keep the Sabbath day holy. The Lord Jesus Christ has given us everything. He's given us commandments and prophets, and this commandment in particular, keep the Sabbath day holy. Can we give him 24 hours in a week? 